Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of Voice of Radio, and look, I am an excitable man who gets excited about many things. It is very often that I see an exciting deck and get very excited. But today, I am even more excited than usual, because back in Generation 1, when we had the very first Pokemon games... I had a favourite Pokemon, and it was Porygon. And I had a second favourite Pokemon, and it was Snorlax. And today, ladies and gentlemen, the deck that I am showing you is a Snorlax Porygon deck. My excitement level, as it goes at the moment, is absolutely through the roof. Let's have a look, shall we? So starting off then with my boy Porygon... It's a Porygon Z from Unbroken Bonds. It's the one that allows you to attach as much special energy during your turn as you like. Seriously, if this deck is even remotely competitive, you will see me running this at tournaments. The attack is... Nah, no one really cares. But it doesn't matter. Because you can attach as many special energy during your turn as you like. And we'll get to all the special energy we run in a moment. But we're going to need an attacker, and the attacker of choice here is Snorlax V Max. Now, I've been on record on a number of occasions and said that I'm not actually a huge fan of Snorlax V. Snorlax V is fine. Free energy, 60 damage, heal as much as you did. Four energy, 170 plus sleep, it'll do. But the V Max for free energy does 60 damage, plus 30 more for each of your bench Pokemon. So make sure you've got a full bench of five. You're doing 210 damage for free energy. That sounds good to me. And that's your main attacker here, right? And believe me, this is a full-on box deck. We've got a lot of different things to talk about. We'll get there in a minute. But starting off, the basic conceit of the deck. We are using Porygon Z to accelerate energy to Snorlax so that we can smash. So what else do we play? Well, the other Pokemon that is played as more than a one-off is Cramorant V. And yes, we've got the first attack, which lets you search for one colorless energy for any two cards and put them in your hand. And that's fine in the early game, especially as you're trying to get your Porygon up and rolling. But really here, it's for the second attack. The second attack for free energy. Now, you have to discard them all, but then you get to do 160 to one of your opponent's Pokemon. And maybe they've got a Dedenne or a Jirachi GX on the bench and you get to take two prizes. Or maybe you just take out Pokemon they're looking to use. Maybe they've only got one Naganadal on the bench so you take it out. And then they can't accelerate energy. Maybe they're a water deck and you take out their only Quagsire. And then they're not actually able to move their energy off of Quagsire and then they're kind of a little bit stuck. I don't know. All I'm saying is that there are plenty of cool things you can do with Cramorant. But then we keep going. We have a copy of Zacian V. Now, Zacian V is a very good Pokemon. It's got a really nice ability that lets you draw three cards. And then any Metal Energy you get, you attach to Zacian. Now, we're not playing any Metal Energy here, all right? It's not going to happen. But actually, if you go first and on turn one, you're not allowed to attack. You're not allowed to play a supporter. It actually becomes really nice here because, you know what? Just draw three cards. It's not a bad turn one ability. And we also here have an attack for free energy that does 220. Good attack, few energy, easily paid. Let's do this. We then see Snivy and Venusaur, or Venusaur and Snivy, as it is actually called. Yeah, we're playing Venusaur and Snivy. Now, Venusaur and Snivy has got an amazing ability whereby when you attach a grass energy from your hand to it, you get to gust one of your opponent's Pokemon active. And I haven't seen the ruling on this, but they're not playing any other gusting, so I believe that this actually works, otherwise they'd be playing other gusting, with something like an Aurora energy. Because when it's attached, it is still a grass energy. I'll have to get some ruling on that. If I can find a definitive answer on this, I will pop it in the description. But the point is, it's also actually got a really nice GX attack that does 50 to each of your opponent's Pokemon. And if this Pokemon has at least two extra energy attached to it, you heal all damage from all of your Pokemon. And you've got some big Pokemon here. 
So it actually works really quite nicely, especially if you spread damage and then start coming in with Cramorant. This could work very nicely indeed. And then we actually see Lugia GX. Seems like it's been a very long time since I saw any... Well, any list that played Lugia GX, to be honest with you. Now, Lugia GX, for free colorless energy, does 30 damage, plus 30 more for each energy attached to your opponent's active, which can work. For four energy, you do a flat 170. And then for free energy, you put your opponent's active Pokemon and all cards attached to it into the loss zone. This could be pretty huge. If you can get rid of their only Pokemon... Or if you can... I mean, anytime they've got one active Pokemon and no bench, this says you win the game. But you can maybe just lost zone a really important Pokemon here, and that could be kind of hilarious. And then, like so many decks at the moment, we've got one copy of Absol. It increases the retreat cost of your opponent's active basic Pokemon by one. In a format which is overflowing with basic Pokemon, this can make it really awkward. It also means that Jirachi doesn't just get free retreat with a skateboard, which can be pretty gosh darn huge, given how many decks are playing Jirachi at the moment. Oh, and I should actually mention Dubwool here. Dubwool's awesome! Double's got an ability which reduces damage done to it by 30. Nobody really cares. But Double has an attack for free colorless energy that does 120 base plus 30 for each prize card your opponent's taken. The goal here, of course, is they take five prizes, you drop a reset stamp and then start hitting 270 every turn until they give up. And that's the Pokemon line. It's a weird Pokemon line. But the thing is, you can put basically whatever you want into it. You're playing Aurora Energy. You're attaching as much energy per turn as you like with Porygon Z. So there really is no reason not to just go kind of a little bit nuts with just different kinds of Pokemon in here. So although I'm giving you a suggested Pokemon line that won with this particular build, let's be clear, there's plenty of other options you can go for here. Now, in terms of energy, we do actually need to spend a couple of minutes talking about the energy. And there's a bunch we play. We play Recycle Energy. Recycle Energy is great. If it gets discarded from play, it goes back to your hand. Bearing in mind that when it goes back to your hand, you can then just reattach it next turn using Porygon Z. That's pretty gosh darn good. We play Draw Energy. When you attach it to one of your Pokemon, you draw a card. Well, bearing in mind you're playing just a whole bunch of colorless energy, why not play a little bit of Draw Energy? Now, this deck does not play Triple Acceleration Energy. I personally would play one or two for Snorlax, but in this particular build, it only works for Snorlax or for Porygon Z, which you don't want to be attacking with, so I can see why they didn't. But it plays Aurora Energy, you've got to discard a card from your hand, but then it's just any energy. It's pretty good. We play Memory Energy here, which lets you use the attacks of your pre-evolutions. And you've basically got two options here. You can use Snorlax's attack. Basically, if you don't have a big enough bench, then Snorlax does become a decent attacker. Or, if you want to use the pre-evolutions attack because you're getting a KO, let's say your opponent's got 60 or less HP remaining, you get the KO while healing as much damage as you did, that's actually kind of cool. So there are reasons to use Snorlax V. Memory energy works. But you do also have a nice little attack on the Porygon that lets you flip three coins and for each head, search a deck for an energy card and put it in your hand. Does let you search for your special energy. You never want to be using that, obviously. But there are going to be times where you've got nothing else and then it actually can work kind of nice. And then the final energy we play here is fighting. We actually play a little bit of basic fighting energy. And the reason is Martial Arts Dojo. Martial Arts Dojo, if you're behind on prizes and you've got a basic fighting energy attached, and it must be a basic fighting, not an Aurora energy, you do an extra 40 damage. Otherwise, you do 10 damage with just a fighting energy attached. You're not playing any other basic energy, so why not play this as a little bit of a trick? And then we've got a whole bunch of weird stuff in the deck. Obviously, we're playing Rare Candy because it's a Stage 2 deck. That shouldn't be terribly surprising. We're playing Cynthia and Caitlyn. Let's you recover a supporter and then draw three cards. That's the kind of card that turns up in pretty much every deck. 
We're playing Marnie here, which is decent for draw and also a little bit of disruption. You and your opponent both shuffle your hands and put them at the bottom of your deck. You draw five, your opponent draws four. You're playing Skylar here. Remember, Skylar has been reprinted now. Let's you search for a trainer card. Nice for finding that rare candy to get up and rolling. You're playing Rosa. If you had a Pokemon KO the previous turn, you get to search for an energy, a trainer card, and a Pokemon. Rosa's great in Stage 2 decks because you can search for the rare candy to Stage 2 and an energy and then just get rolling. That's really cool. Switch is not a particularly unusual card, lets you switch your active for one of your bench. Pokemon Communication, letting you swap a Pokemon you don't want in your hand for one you do want in your deck is not terribly unusual. And, you know, Recess Stamp is basically a one-of in every deck at the moment. Lets you put your opponent down to a hand size equal to their remaining prizes. And this is where we start to diverge and get a little bit weird. We've got Lily's Clefairy Doll here. And Lily's Clefairy Doll is a nice little Pokemon, or Lily's Poke Doll, I think it's actually called. It's basically a 30 HP Pokemon that doesn't give up a prize. Now, it does activate Rosa, which is great, but it also just buys you a turn to set up. We've got Giant Charm here, which is very nice just for giving you an extra 30 HP. On Pokemon, which are pretty gosh darn big anyway, yeah, that seems kind of cool to me. We then see Lieutenant Surge's strategy, which lets you play two other supporters during the turn. It's pretty gosh darn good. And then we see Misty's Favor. And Misty's Favor lets you search for free supporter cards, reveal them, and put them into your hand. Which is pretty nice. So the theory here is you try and use Misty's Favor, and then next turn you use Lieutenant Surge to go a bit nuts with your supporters. You play Sonya here, which lets you search for two basic Pokemon or two energy. Put them into your hand. That's pretty gosh darn good. And we're left with a supporter line, which is a little bit weird. And then the final card here, and it's one that I absolutely love, is Hyper Potion. What you have to do is discard two energy, and then you heal 120 from one of your Pokemon. But the trick here is that you've got Recycle Energy. So you discard two Recycle Energy, heal 120 with Hyper Potion, and then they go back to your hand and you can just reattach them with Porygon Z, and it's kind of wonderful. I'm worried that this deck doesn't have enough Pokemon Search to set up in the early game, and I'm worried that it's a little bit too fancy, but it's a deck that has my original first and second favourite Pokemon, you would better believe that this is going to be a deck that I'm going to be testing when we get all of these new tricks from VMAX Rising. And maybe it will remain a niche deck. Maybe it's not the best deck in the format, but it's certainly got options to basically beat everything when you get rolling. And it is very, very much on my radar. But I'd like to know if it's on your radar. I'd like to know how good you think it is. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Wasi Plays, where you can find out about a whole bunch of games that don't have Pokemon in, but are still pretty gosh darn good. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.